Gold and other commodities falling to their lowest levels in two weeks as the dollar rises against the euro. Our next guest says gold is caught in a painful yo-yo that will ultimately end with even higher prices. Thomas Windmill is the portfolio manager of the Midas Fund, which ranked in the top 5% of its peers for 2009 and has gained 34% so far this year, far more than the 22% jump in gold prices. Tom, great to have you with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. So yo-yo, meaning yeah. just a lot of volatility or what? A lot of volatility. I think uh, we've seen that the government moves by crisis and the the United States government, I think, is by far the biggest driver of gold prices. So, you know, we just listened to a little bit of an explanation of quantitative easing, talking about the tools that the Fed have has. But don't forget, it's the Fed and the other U members of the U.S. government that brought us to our current crisis. How good are their tools? That's a good point. What about what's going on overseas? How is that playing in? And I think about, you know, we've spent a lot of time on, on Ireland, obviously, uh, today. But how's that play into in the moving gold right now? Well, the moving gold right now is really interesting because it's coming back to a more traditional uh, move when the when the dollar strong gold goes down. Um, there had been a kind of a dislocation, a, a, a correlation of gold prices going up when the euro was getting weak and the dollar was going up. So that's come, come back to the traditional uh, inverse relationship. Where do you kind of see prices going over the next six to 12 months? Do they just continue their trend higher, or even with that volatility? I think what we're going to see is a gradual increase in the price of gold as the inflation threat becomes more apparent in the system. I think that's going to work its way up. And then the gold will go yo-yo, quite vertical, when there is a crisis. Um, you know, you say crisis. <laughs> that always makes me nervous. I mean, what kind of crisis are you anticipating? Well, um, I think there is a, a question of solvency, not only in Europe, but in other you know, governments as well. And, and you uh, think that's going to reach, I mean, it feels like it's already reached crisis proportions, but you think it's going to even es escalate potentially? Well, uh, insolvency has a funny way of you know, being very ignorable until it kind of hits one day. And that's what we saw with some governments unable to refinance. And I think we'll see more of that. And that's where gold will kind of step in. What do you make, because we've been covering some of what um, um, the various 13F filings, George Soros apparently, um, who's described gold as the ultimate asset bubble. He cut his holding a little bit. John Paulson apparently kept his bet in uh, shares of um, the SPDR gold, the uh, maintaining kind of his largest stake. I mean, do you care when you hear kind of these guys in terms of what they're doing? Well, I think it's good. They're obviously following what we're saying at Midas. So, um, you know, we're, we're still bullish at Midas, and uh, we think the long-term trend is reflected in what we call the tyranny of numbers. In other words, $65 trillion of entitlement to obligation in the United States, the $11 trillion of actual official budget debt is right. uh, just not going to go away, no matter how deeply the, the Fed puts its head in the sand. I mean, the macro trends are there to really support the price of gold, aren't they? The macro trends, the short-term factors, is North Korea firing a missile today. It's, it's very hard to make money on that basis, and I wouldn't suggest that the medium-term factors, supply and demand, that tends to move the market market the way we're seeing it today. How would you, you know, advise kind of investors in general to kind of play it at this point? You know, we've talked a lot about what the precious metal has done versus various other uh, investment models, if you will. Well, I, if you want to take a concentrated position in gold, I'd advise you diversify, have some uh, anti-acids and your gold position because it's going to be a lot, it's a lot of volatility. Um, but for most people, gold is not an income producing asset. So for older people looking for income, uh, it's a smaller position with uh, those who can uh, accept the volatility right. and have a longer investing outlook a little bit more. When you talk about this yo-yo, Tom, and, uh, and you say kind of the overall trend is going to be a higher one, but when we pull back, I mean, how significant could be some of those pullbacks be in your view? Well, the pullbacks would reflect a psychology that's all clear. As a matter of fact, I've spoken to a number of people who are anxious about the economy and said, what happens if the Fed solves everything? I think there's a hope for that. I'd say the gold price could go down significantly, perhaps $1,100 an ounce. That, I think, jewelry buying will kick in, right. investment demand will kick in again. Um, it's but a I buying opportunity it's, then. You want to buy low and sell high. All right, going to leave it there. Tom, thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Good to have you back. Thomas Windmill, everybody, uh, over at the Midas Fund.